and welcome back to my channel. This video is about principles of bookkeeping controls and today I'm going to talk about PLCA reconciliation and VAT control account reconciliation. For this topic, I have entered some of the different terminologies used that could be helpful in the description down below. Let's start with a PLCA reconciliation. Let's take a look at the example. The balance of the PLCA of ABC Limited does not agree with the total of the payable balances as at the end of the month. We can see that the PLCA is much lower than the total of the payables. Upon investigation, we have found out that the following errors were made and must be corrected. So we have five errors and to correct them, we have to make adjustments in either the control account or payables. We can see the PLCA and the balance is here and the total of the payables here. Once we made all the corrections for these five errors, our adjusted balance brought down of PLCA should be equal to our adjusted total of payables. Take note, in correcting the PLCA, the journal entry is needed, but I will be showing them to you in the later videos. In correcting the payables, there is no need for journal entry. We just have to adjust the individual accounts and adjust the totals. So let's start with the errors. Letter A, purchase return of 145 to a supplier was not recorded in the payables. This is an example of omission error. Nothing was omitted in PLCA. The 145 was omitted in the payables. So to correct this error, we should make the adjustment in the payables. Remember, purchases returns decreases our payables or should be deducted from the payables. So let's enter minus 145 and then let's enter purchases return. Next error, the total column of purchases daybook was 3,790 but recorded as 3,970 in the control account. This is an example of transposition error wherein the digits are mixed up. The total column of the purchases daybook should be recorded in the PLCA as 3,790, but instead we recorded an incorrect amount, which is higher than the correct amount. To correct this error, we should make the adjustment in the PLCA. First, let's calculate the difference. So 3790 minus 3970, 180 should be removed from the PLCA. So PLCA increases in credit and to decrease the PLCA, we should enter this amount in debit. Then let's enter the details, purchases daybook. Next error, an invoice amounting to 697 was not recorded in the purchases daybook but recorded in the individual account. So this is an example of omission error. An invoice was omitted in the purchases daybook, therefore it is not recorded in the PLCA but recorded in the payables. So to correct this error, we should make the adjustment in the PLCA. It's a purchase invoice, so it means it increases our PLCA. So we should record it to credit and for the details, purchases day book. Next error, when adding up the payables ledger, the debit balance of a supplier's account of 63 was added as a credit balance. This is an example of wrong balance error. There is no error made in the PLCA, but only in adding up the totals of the payables. So to correct this error, we should make the adjustments to the total of the payables. First, the debit balance of 63 was supposed to be deducted, but instead it was added. So we have to take it out by subtracting 63 from the total. This removes the error that we made. Second, deduct the debit balance of 63 from the total like how it was supposed to be in the first place so we have to deduct 
263. But we can just combine them. We could deduct 126 from the total of the payables. Then let's add some details. It's debit balance entered as credit. Next, for the last error, the total column of discounts received day book was overcasted by 100. This is an example of casting error. The total column of discounts received day book was overcasted by 100. Therefore, the amount recorded in the PLCA was incorrect. So to correct this error, we should make the adjustment in the PLCA. This might be a little tricky, so I hope I'll be able to explain it properly. The discounts received decreases the PLCA, therefore it is recorded in debit. But for this error, we have recorded 100 more than the correct amount in debit, therefore we decrease the PLCA 100 more than what we're supposed to, so we have to put it back. We have to increase the PLCA back by 100, so we should record this amount in credit. And then let's enter the details. Discounts received debug overcast. Now we're done with all the adjustments. The next thing we need to do is to balance the PLCA and calculate the adjusted total of the payables. First is the PLCA. Let's get the total of both sides. Then let's enter the balance carry down to the side that has the lower total. Let's calculate the amount. Next, let's enter the balance brought down to the opposite side where we entered the balance carry down. So this is now our adjusted balance brought down. Next, let's calculate the total of the payables. We only have two adjustments, which are both negative. So let's deduct it from the original total. Now our adjusted balance of the PLCA is equal to the adjusted total of the payables. Next, let's move on to VAT control account reconciliation. Let's take a look at our example. The VAT control account of ABC Limited has a credit balance at the end of May of 2032. The credit balance at the end of April was 7,850. So this is the VAT control account. The credit balance at the end of April will be the beginning balance for May. So we could see this figure here. And the credit balance at the end of May is here. The following VAT figures were extracted for the month of May. These figures are extracted from the day box, so we have to record them to our VAT control account. Let's analyze them one by one. It will be easier if we remember that VAT always goes to the same side where we entered the net amount from the day box to the general ledger. First, the sales is an income, so it goes to credit. So the VAT for the sales goes to credit as well. Next is the discounts received. The discounts received are the discounts that we receive from our suppliers. So these are discounts for our purchases. Purchases goes to debit, but discounts received decreases our purchases, so it goes to credit. Therefore, the VAT goes to credit as well. Next is purchases. Purchases goes to debit, so the VAT goes to debit as well. Next is sales returns. The sales goes to credit, but the sales returns decreases our sales, so it goes to debit, and the VAT goes to debit as well. Next is the discounts allowed. The discounts allowed are the discounts that we allowed or gave 
to our customers. So these are the discounts for our sales. Sales goes to credit, but discounts allowed decreases our sales, so it goes to debit. Therefore, the VAT goes to debit. Next is the purchases returns. The purchases goes to debit. But the purchases returns decreases our purchases, so it goes to credit. Therefore, the VAT goes to credit. Next is cash sales. Cash sales are also sales, so they go to credit. Therefore, the VAT goes to credit as well. And the last is payment to HMRC. This payment decreases our bank account, so it goes to credit in our bank account, therefore debit to VAT control account. Another way of analyzing this is we made a payment to HMRC, so it means we had a liability to HMRC. The liability goes to credit, but by paying HMRC, it means we reduces our liability, so it goes to debit. Next, we have to balance the VAT control account. The balance carry down is already inserted, so we have to total both sides. Then let's insert the balance brought down to the opposite side of the balance carried down. So this credit balance at the end of May means it's a liability that we have to pay to HMRC. If it's a debit balance, it means it becomes an asset that is receivable from HMRC. And that's it for this video. I hope you find it useful. If you want to watch more videos like this, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.